Okay, good day everybody. Um, today I'm going to be talking about um, the concept of the seven deadly sins, right? I think we all are familiar with these seven deadly sins, but we just, just wanted to exp give you a, a more in-depth sort of understanding of what these really mean and how it affects us and how we can sort of overcome or avoid these sins through, you know, through spiritual practice. So this is basically from a spiritual point of view, okay? So the first, okay, sin, the most common one is obviously lust, right? Now what is lust? I mean, if you look in the dictionaries, you will see that lust is just an intense craving. In fact, if you really look at all the seven deadly sins, you'll realize that they're just just various different manifestations of the human desire. And just bringing this concept of desire with the Dharmic religions like Buddhism, Hinduism, you'll understand that, you know, their main teachings, like Jainism, the main teachings of the Dharmic religions are not that different from, I guess, the you know, Judeo-Christian traditions, etc., the Abrahamic religions. See, lust, what is really lust? Lust is just the intense desire, intense craving of anything. But actually, I understand that today it's, in the modern age, it's mostly, you know, sort of associated with, you know, sexual um, connotations. And it's it makes logical sense as well, because... In people in this modern age are highly deluded, really, and have completely you know, destroyed their consciousness on this lust. Especially, well, it's in the it started from the West, I guess, but now it's everywhere, East, West, everywhere is affected. And you know, especially through the rise of you know technology like internet and pornography and etc. It's just been fueled the Western, I guess. So I guess this notion of lustful, lust, you know, it's just fueled everywhere across the East. Everywhere you go, anywhere really, it's just there. And um, basically, okay. So basically, that's lust. Now, what's the difference between lust and love? Okay, people generally get deluded as well when you, when they think, okay, this is a, my girlfriend. And I'm okay with her, so there's no lust there. That's not the case. See, lust is just a need to understand. It's a manifestation of this desire, and just gone berserk. Okay, so anything of the mind that that the mind thinks is right is actually incorrect because it's just delusional. That's what we need to understand. The root cause is the mind. And okay, so basically. Lust is actually the is born from ignorance, okay? Because why? Because as you know that you'll notice that you know you've say you've lust for a woman, you you have sexual relations with her, you left her, and you find you but what happens? You still have this desire, it never ends. You want to have sex with another one, another one, another one, whatever. You never have this end and you know this thing like it's never ending, especially especially today it's worse. You know, you've got these pornographic things or whatever. It's destroying consciousness because it's never satisfied the individual. And he just wants to do more and more and more and his sex addiction just discreet, destroys. I mean, he doesn't need to have any sex anymore with other people. Just the watching the you know internet-related material destroys it completely. And that's what's happening. And that's the main problem is and what happens actually in a spiritual standpoint of view you know you can go to ssrf.org to understand it more www.ssrf.org to understand what it means but basically what happens is that there are mental impressions created for each action we do and especially lust is an intense desire and those negative things you know just gets imprinted in the mind and it stays there and then that causes once we die those these things manifest in full form and we end up into this these realms of the hellish realms you know where we need to suffer because of our consciousness because basically 
lost one of one of my you know I've, 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 I'm a witness of one person actually telling me this that when he's having sex is actually the feeling he gets you know is that you're killing someone and that's similar because uh, it's once people go to a higher level like sex addiction what actually happens is that because of that all that rubbish that's fed into the system it's actually the consciousness of the mind is very similar to the one person another person is actually you know say killing someone because it's the same thing it's just the distortion of the mind that deludes the individual to think that that's pure love or you know whatever it's it's it just is and it what it does it also it just you know, it's linked to all these other, all these, you know, these these seven deadly sins we call them. They're all interrelated, actually. You don't have one. You just have when you have one, you have everything else because they're just desires. They're different manifestations of desires. Okay, and that's that's the problem. So lust is, and to actually see, you know, to, I have actually personally seen the difference between lust and love. And to actually witness it is an amazing thing. But in order to witness it, you need to detach from it. So if you do not detach from lust, you can never find true love. And in order to detach, you need to you know, live a celibate sort of practice known as, I guess, brahmacharya. Or and if you, you can practice anything celibacy. When you practice complete celibacy and you, you know, refrain from masturbation practices and refrain from... Especially, you, know, you need to go to a level where you, your thoughts are purified, which means that the physical has to be controlled, then the mind has to be controlled, because the ultimate thing is the mind, you see, the mind is the source of all problems, if the mind is filled with negative things, you will never be able to be free, and in order to free from lust, you need to do these things called spiritual practices, like meditation, chanting, etc., to control the mind, that's the whole point, see, that takes you to the root it's like a solution, root solution problem. You have a problem, but you need to cure it. And the cure is through intense practices of meditation to destroy these negative impressions in the mind. Okay, so that's what lust is, I guess. And gluttony, see, as I've mentioned previously, that all these other seven deadly sins are just interrelated, you know, different distortions and manifestations of the mind that's gone berserk when it especially when the mind has nothing to do you know proper things but if you're working now this is we need to understand this is also that when the individual is working hard and he's focused on something the mind is focused on something he doesn't create a sin so if you read the Sanatana Dharma text you'll know what karma yoga is karma yoga is the yoga of action why do they focus on karma yoga any sort of action you do any sort of work, not action, what it means is work, really. You go in as a farmer, or you know, you plow the field, or whatever. You go do physical work, you do some sort of work. As long as you keep your mind active, it does not create negative things because your mind is doing something, you know, and the mind actually cannot do multiple things at one go. It only can do one thing. So basically, if you're typing, you're just doing one thing, you're hard working. And if you're a hard worker and you feel then you don't, you know, have these negative things. The only time you actually create sins is when you have free time. Okay. Now now that's something we need to really understand what it means. You know, these are very important things to understand as well. Now the second thing about gluttony, okay. Now gluttony is obviously related to the desire, again desire the same thing of eating too much food or you know not satisfied, just having too much. I want to eat too much. My stomach is full, but I want to eat too much. I myself have suffered a lot in that as well. And I can relate to it. Now, gluttony is also a sin because it's just a manifestation of desire. And when it's not controlled, what happens? You see all these obese people, etc. You know, they eat too much, they eat too much. Another thing about gluttony I want to talk about clearly is, which is very important that people do not know much about in the West, is the fact of that what type of food we should be able to we should be eating now if an individual eats tamasic food but tamasic food is basically especially food that is not right for you and what is not right for you and we'll I'll just quickly go over that especially that is these especially anything that's been killed 
quite like the flesh of an animal or like non-vegetarian that like meat fish eggs i guess so anything that's killed for the purpose of you eating it consuming it just for your own pleasure that is a direct sin the reason is is because if you look at this in a practical perspective you will realize that an animal like a cow for instance the people have abused over and over in the west i guess and even in many eastern countries it's everywhere it's just been destroyed is that the holy cow you know they look at it and they they look at beef you know so basically or any other animal you know chicken whatever you eat you need to see that these all these animals are just herbivores you know they they're defenseless sort of thing well they have some defense but they don't do anything and what the human being does is that they just use them as a source of pleasure to eat flesh what they don't realize is that they're the same consciousness as a human being but just less evolved the human being is highly evolved with a high highly developed brain and high sense of you know ability to intellect to distinguish what's right and what's wrong whereas an animal is just doesn't have that ability to do so and what the human being does instead we tend to you know indulge in all these things and therefore we create direct sins but if we even if we even if the animal was killed by someone else the mere fact that you enjoy in taking the flesh or whatever of the animal the dead one the or that suffering is actually if that animal has to suffer and it's a similar consciousness as you are then you're bound to suffer these are the laws of dharma so you cannot escape that regardless of what you think and because of that people are going to hell people can go to hell by eating flesh of animals simply as that this is the hidden truth okay so basically people need to know this and because because all these you know these heaven and hell are basically the different these are just the laws of samsara these are the laws of karma every action has an equal opposite reaction in the spiritual world every action you do will you'll have to suffer for it so therefore it's avoid it's best to avoid all this you know remorse take remorse take repentance against the supreme god which obviously exists everywhere people do not know that again we need to see the videos and you know it's a sanatan dharma text to understand what god is you know and um what our role is what are the purpose of life is okay so that's the next point and in order to have control over gluttony as well it's it's about you know detachment it's about having control over the mind and things such as spiritual practice like meditation as i said chanting of the name of god and having faith in god and surrendering to god also all these things will help you to get there all these other rubbish stuff you know all these other teachings all these other things by other people they're not really the source solution greed again as you know as i've said it's just a manifestation of the desires you know it's just the mind going berserk now greed is similar to any other thing but i guess you could attach greed with the greed for money greed for material possessions you know it never ends really it's just another desire an ins- insatiable desire of you know having power that's greed you know power addiction is actually considered to be the worst addiction you know the, for humanity because you see that all the people on the highest rank are all power addicts you know they they never satisfied with with what they have they want to have more and more and this is why you know humanity is falling today if we didn't realize that people on the top are just you know completely greedy i guess the word is they never satisfied but the thing is we don't we shouldn't attach the word with greed with work if an individual if he have an investment bank or right and he's working 16 hours a day or something 12 15 hours a day he's working continuously and in his mind if he if he's just working you you probably making a lot of money but if he's just working and working and does not does not have these these thoughts about money 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 in his mind he's not actually creating a sin because the sin happens when the human mind says oh i want more money you know that evil thing that comes into us and we can feel that negative thing in as well if you're more subtle, subtle and conscious you'll feel those negative vibrations and that's when you commit the sin because that 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 actually is what you're not supposed to be that's the opposite of god sort of thing that's the devilish demonic behavior patterns that all these things these lustful seven deadly sins are just demonic behaviors it takes you towards the demonic side of things hellish realms you know that's what it is this is the mindset because it's just 
think about God as light, then darkness is, is evil. And these are just manifestations of the mind that needs to be you know, purified. Yeah. Sloth. Now, sloth is an interesting one because it's not just actual greed, but it's another manifestation gone berserk on the mind. You know, the sloth is again laziness. You know, so when the when you don't have any desire to do anything, I'm lazy. Uh, I just go watch TV, just sleep, eat popcorn or whatever, whatever you know, and go home and go sleeping. Now that's sloth. Okay, just laziness. See, why is this a problem? Okay, think about it this way: is that Sloth actually can create sins all over because they are, as I said before, they're all interrelated. Why? Because think about it this way. Now, if you're lazy, you immediately have these. And it, what happens is when you have more time and you're lazy, the mind has a lot of things to do. And it, the first thing it chooses is the wrong things. We would just, by nature, you know, the mind chooses to do the wrong things. Because why? Because we're conditioned that way simple as that we're not conditioned to do spiritual practices you know some fortunate places in India in ancient India they where they have this great tradition of holy texts reading the holy texts the Vedas etc and med doing meditation that's their part of life you know if they were taught of like that then they were fortunate because of the all that spiritual upbringing but you know today what do you have is TV God is you know what you got uh, that's all we have we got TV internet games, mobile phones, apps, etc, etc, and we're just wasting our time, and all these things are actually sort of, sort of destroying the consciousness, you know, it's not basic, well, why, when I say destroying consciousness means, you're destroying consciousness means you're impurifying the mind, instead of purifying the mind, the mind is going everywhere, and the mind, you know, the mind, when the mind goes everywhere, impressions are created in the mind, subconscious mind, and that leads to, you know, eventually if the negative negative impressions and rubbish impressions, the mind is just keep on deluded. Now what we need to understand is that when when you sleep, you know, you have these various random dreams, etc. coming up. They're all just manifestations of what you've seen in the reality. And it's a similar thing that will happen to you when you die is that all these dreams will come. I mean, these these things will manifest. But what will also happen is that you will be sucked sort of into the negative regions of the hellish realms of the universe, subtle dimensions, where because of similar people like other people who've committed lots of sin go in the same place. And when they all concentrate, you all have to be all together and therefore you go to hell and you, that's where you suffer. It's all karma. Yeah, all actions will have equal reaction. So therefore, in order to therefore, uh, one of the key teachings is actually karma yoga. You know, regardless of anything, just keep working actually, and just avoid the negative things. You know, the more you work, you realize you just it's a great way to purify yourself because you just work and work and do something. Then your mind is not affected because as long as your mind is active at doing something, you realize that you're not affected. The mind generally can only do one thing at a time. You know, you, if you're working at something, then you're not thinking about sex or thinking about all these negative things, right? So that's the key. And then also, when you, when you surrender to the divine, surrender to God and start doing chanting consciousness, you immediately will see positive results and you will do better. Wrath, again, it's the same thing. Um, it's just a... Uh, and the mind goes berserk. And obviously, you know, wrath can be fueled also by what we don't know. You know, it's in the Tarmic text is that, you know, food food can actually fuel consciousness. So if you eat, you know, all these negative foods, again, this meat, fish, eggs, and even spicy foods, especially hot, spicy foods and all these things, what actually happens is you will notice that you have this great, desire for intense full desire, lustful desires, have more sex or have whatever, and then also you will see aggression, greater aggression, have more this aggression coming inside within you, you know, that's because of what you eat and what you, basically we are just a product of, you know, what we do and what we see or what we act and what we eat, etc. We are the product of our environments. If we feel our environment with all these rubbish stuff, we bound to be rubbish, and even music can be rubbish sometimes. Like you know, if you got rap, hip hop music, but filled with violent 
you know, sort of um, behavior or, you know, voice patterns or, you know, recording with foul languages that obviously induces, destroys consciousness and people think that's cool. So this is the society we're living at. You know, we don't understand all the consequences behind it. So that's very important to know that as well. And wrath, obviously, you know, it's for very difficult to control, but again, surrendering to the divine and you know, deep spiritual practices, meditation will you know, help you to get there. It's all about the mind, you know, eventually. It's all about the mind. And now envy again. So basically, envy is another sin because, you know, you... Even wherever you are, you just have this desire sometimes that you want. You just feel like, why is that guy better than me? Why did he get a better promotion? Or why, you know, he's, he was a junior than me. Why is he actually better than me? You know, you have this feeling. And as soon as you have this feeling, you feel the stress in your mind and your body. You just feel this great stress that you have, uncontrollable stress that you create, you know. And you have all these other, you start, you start to get all these other issues as well. And it's a great problem because, you know, it's just, just the fact that we don't realize that we're all, you know, child of God. or We're all unique and we're all part of the same divine consciousness that brought us to life, sort of thing. And, you know, that's that's where we forget everything, that we're, that we're not special. As soon as one person thinks he's special, he, has, he creates this own delusion, his own thing. You know, when he, when she thinks that the other, he wants to, he, he thinks about you know getting something that he doesn't have. It just appears that you know if he, what's the purpose of life? I mean, it's not it's not to attain something. It's to surrender. You know, what is love? Love is actually called sacrifice. You know, that's the true love. Whereas lust is about possession, desire, more and more. It's the opposite. So we need to identify what's real and what's unreal. Same thing with envy. Envy is just, you know, another form of a desire, really, that you want from someone else. You want it within you. Like, you want to be big, you want to be this, and you want to be that. You want to be, you know, young, you want to be this and that. So it's just desires. And pride, now that's the last one. It's an interesting one. Even, even great, you know, yogi, you know, great meditating people or spiritual practitioners also struggle in this. And they've failed in many cases because it's just this natural feeling that until we attain the divine divinity state of being through great practice of meditation and you know all these different things surrenderance one will always have this thing called pride within him everyone has it it's like an ego basically it's the self ego and that's the that's that binds us in us so the pride is also there so you you think you're special than the other ones, you know, you you have this great ego within yourself that you think you're, you know, unique or you, you know, yeah, if someone tells you you're great, then you just assume that I'm great or whatever, all these things. And, you know, the true leader is actually doesn't depict those things. You'll see a difference between a true leader and a, and a fake leader between, this, you know, the pride aspect. And it's all, it's a great, and to actually, you know, get rid of this, it's, it's, it's one of the most difficult, probably it comes at the end, really, because, you know, sometimes people get angry, and then, you know, they can just start saying rubbish things, even if a monk, even if he, even if it was a monk, or anybody who's sacrificed his life, but if someone said something wrong to him, he gets angry, aggressive, and he's, he gets this, develops this ego within himself, in order to actually surrender all that, it's difficult, you know. And you need to be at a great consciousness, like like Christ. You know, when he was tortured, he still had this feeling for love of humanity, and that's the level what human beings need to strive for, actually. And um, you know, I guess you got all these other spiritual masters, like and Lord Buddha and Krishna, who've taught about you know love, humanity, and peace throughout times. And you know, so that's something that is there. Pride is another thing, another sin, and. Basically, all these sins can be, you know, controlled through systematic way through meditation and detachment, continuous detachment. You just keep and then surrendering to the Lord, you know, so like surrendering to the God. Keep practicing, keep practicing, and you'll slowly get there. Because eventually, you want to, you know, progress and evolve your consciousness states to divinity consciousness, where you. You know, all blissful state, and that's the goal of life. 
We thank you very much for listening and hope you've enjoyed this video and hope you've learned something. Thank you.